Hey, so what's going on guys, back here with Drug Tech, back again with yet another video for you guys. And today we're going to be looking at how the POCO X3 NFC performs in gaming. So we're going to be doing a gaming test with two games, uh, COD Mobile as well as PUBG Mobile. Because those are the two games which I play quite regularly. Honestly, I believe that this phone brings great value to the table because it has a great camera system. If you want to watch my camera review, I will leave the link in the description below. So I actually did a camera test on... The 64 megapixel camera as well as the wide angle camera of the Poco X3 NFC. And honestly, I think in terms of the screen, the screen is pretty good, even though it's an LCD panel. But I think the screen with 120 Hz refresh rate, it is a pretty good screen. Overall, the colors are nice, you know, for LCD panel. But of course, the UI doesn't really keep up with the 120 Hz refresh rate. Yes, yeah, adaptive, but yet I find many instances where the 120 Hz refresh rate isn't really being used to its fullest on the UI. But today we're going to be talking about gaming performance on the POCO X3 NFC and I think probably that's where the shortcoming is going to show like rendering graphics and so on and so forth. I mean daily tasks like, like using social media apps or using the camera, I mean basically any phone can do that. But without further ado, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, do hit that subscribe button and enable notifications so you can get notified on the latest videos which I post. And without further ado, let's get right into the gaming test of the POCO X3 NFC. Alright guys, so we are back and you can see I have my POCO X3 NFC here with uh, basically two games which I downloaded. I just downloaded Call of Duty so yeah, I actually played it for a bit. By the way, I'll be showing to you guys and I'll be showing you the frame rate as well because the game Turbo Mode has frame rate counter. So I'll show you how it goes. So basically when you open the game, you'll be greeted with the game Turbo Mode. Game Turbo Mode basically gives you features like um, notification disabling and then screen recording, screenshot and also boosting the overall performance of the device by clearing your background apps and such. So right now I have uh, PUBG open. This is the latest version of PUBG. You can see right here. So I'm going to play a simple game. But before that, let me show you the settings. Let me go into graphics. All right, guys, so you can see here are my graphics settings. So my graphics are set to HD. I mean, this is default. And you can see my frame rate is set to high. High is not really 60 frames per second. Anyway, this phone can't handle, so that's the reason why it's set to high as maximum. Uh, actually quite disappointed. 120Hz refresh rate screen with high graphics basically can't even achieve half of the 120Hz refresh rate. Uh, trust me, I'll show you later. So my colors are set to classic. I'm basically never tweak these settings. Shadows are on. I know shadows, a lot of people say that disabling shadows actually increases the performance, but honestly, just saying you're a gamer and you don't want to fiddle with the settings the default settings let's see how this phone runs so i'm sure shadows off would actually help just like it helped the tcl plex so let's get into a game pretty quick so these are stereo speakers by the way so the speakers are really awesome i do love the speakers let me crank them up hope my internet doesn't break down halfway so my wi-fi is off all right so let's get into this game you can see the stuttering in the graphics really not smooth uh, the camera is shooting at uh, 60 frames per second so I'm sure you can see the 30 frames right here you can see the stuttering the screen refresh rate is good and the touch sampling is pretty good as well at uh, 240 Hertz I should say but overall the graphics is too stuttery for my liking Okay, let me turn off shadows and give you a look. So you can see shadows. Let me turn them off. Okay, so shadows are off. Uh, it doesn't really help. It's still stuttering here and there. Let me show you some frame rates here. I'm not sure whether you can see this. See the frame rate right here. So it's only 37 frames, 31 frames. I mean, yeah, that's about it you can get for the graphics wise. Shadows does help but so negligible. I, I would say just leave the shadows on. It's not going to make much difference. You can see I'm turning the plane around. This really, really low frame rate. You can see 32 frames per second. 31 frames per second. The phone overall is not really hot. It's just slightly warm to the touch. Let me just jump down in random places. Let me see. You can see graphics overall. Okay, but just I don't like the frame rate. The screen is very responsive though. I'm using the original screen protector that came with the device. Alright, I think I'm landing in a very terrible place. 
Let's make the best out of it. Alright, so we're landing right here. I can see some stuttering already. Alright, so some frame rate dropped pretty bad. Wow, the frame rate is really, really dropping. Alright, helmet man. Let's let this run and see how the frame rate is. So you can see 37 frames per second. The corner here, right here. 31. So hardly even hitting 40. Basically, you can't hit 40. What else do we have? We have some features right here. Okay, let's close that. Frame rate is dropping like nobody's business, to be honest. Okay, so basically I've been playing this game for around 15 to 20 minutes and the phone is still cool, I should say. Not really unbearable. But the frame rate is still bad. You can see the stuttering is getting worse. So in terms of cooling, no issues. I love the stereo speakers though. Great for media consumption. Gonna find some enemies so I don't die in the process. Just randomly fire. Okay. okay, let's just hit there. Okay, I died. There was some lag there when I was panning. Yeah, that's what made me miss the shot. My ping is fine. Anyways. Yeah, you can see what I mean by the frame rate. That's what I really don't like about this device. It can't keep up with the game, basically. So when I was shooting him, basically I was shooting at all the wrong places. Not because of my ping, but it's because of the phone graphics lagging, basically. Alright, so let's head over to COD Mobile. Alright guys, so basically I just downloaded this game, so I haven't really set up anything. But anyways, uh, we'll see how it goes. So this is the intro game, as you see. I don't know why my account is not being like loaded on this device. I'm not sure why. Maybe I do have to play this first match. Okay, let me set the graphics and let's set the advanced mode. Alright, so you can see the graphics are so much better on this on this game than on PUBG. Getting steady frame rate. Let me see what are the settings. Audio and graphics. You can see on medium graphics, frame rate is high. Uh, but I'll keep that at the default settings. Yeah, so this game is pretty easy, I should say.
okay to leave. Yeah, so basically, the graphics are very acceptable. Of course, this is a. I don't think this is a real game anyway because it's the intro. So I had the last kill. Here you can see some favorite drops. Yeah, but other than that, pretty good frame rate on uh, Call of Duty Mobile. Alright guys, so to conclude this video on the Poco X3 NFC in terms of gaming and I think that that's where the phone really struggles. I mean, in the keynote, when this phone was launched, they were saying about how good it is, you know, playing games and stuff. Yes, definitely the, the stereo speakers do help in terms of the immersiveness of the game. But in terms of having a 120Hz refresh rate on a mid-tier device, I think that's overkill. The main reason being the chipset cannot handle 120Hz, even 60 frames per second gaming. Uh, even at the mid-tier settings, I mean, having a 120Hz refresh rate is kind of a gimmick in a sense, a marketing gimmick. In fact, the UI doesn't even handle the 120Hz refresh rate steadily. Even sometimes when I'm scrolling through the apps, sometimes it goes to 25 or 30 frames per second. I'm not sure why the lag. I'm on the latest firmware, by the way. I just updated it a couple of days ago. And honestly, I didn't see any major improvement. Maybe there's some tweaks to the camera and stuff like that, but overall, nothing really groundbreaking. I mean, the updates have been coming. I had my third update already, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And honestly, the screen, to me, even if they gave me a 90 hertz refresh rate or 60 hertz refresh rate, it's not going to make a big difference. Because basically, the processor cannot output extreme frame rate, even in COD Mobile as well as PUBG Mobile. So as you saw in the settings in PUBG Mobile, the maximum I could go is high, which is basically not even like 60 frames per second. It can't even hit 60 frames per second, in fact. So what's the point of 120 hertz refresh rate? Even if you give me 144Hz refresh rate, I mean, it's, it's kind of useless in a way. Uh, it doesn't really help the experience. So I wish they gave an OLED screen instead of a 120Hz refresh rate LCD panel. Uh, but that would definitely bring cost up. But I'm sure they will be able to do that. I don't mind having a side-mounted fingerprint scanner with an OLED panel. I mean, that would work perfectly. But for gaming-wise, definitely look elsewhere because definitely this phone is not really geared for gaming. It doesn't have overheating issues but marketing this phone as being able to play games i think that's just not true at all in my experience I, of course i bought this with my own money so that's why i can tell you how i feel about this product and honestly using this phone on the daily the battery life is good the cameras are good overall performance is good but when it comes to gaming i think there are many other mid-range devices that can perform just as good for probably half the price just like the tcl plex which i reviewed earlier i think gaming wise i would choose the tcl plex over this phone i mean this one has the newer snapdragon processor but i think the tcl plex is on par with this in, or in fact even better i guess the ui is more stable on the tcl plex but on this it's still work in progress i should say hopefully a few updates down the line this will improve gaming yes game turbo and all this but it's still a gimmick to me i mean what's the point of clearing background apps if your game still doesn't run smoothly come on poco you should improve the gaming performance on the Poco X3 NFC. In fact, I should say I definitely love this device, but the gaming wise, I still will go back to my iPhone. I mean, I have an iPhone to go to, but what if those people who don't have an iPhone to go to, I wonder what they're going to be doing with the graphics. Maybe set it to like what? The lowest graphics, which is kind of sad. I mean, at least this should be able to run like HD graphics at high, quite smoothly. At least you should be able to get like what? 40 frames per second at least 40 to 50 frames per second but this is not even achieving 40 to 50 frames per second so it's kind of a sad thing uh if you are a cod mobile player i think you would you wouldn't complain at all because i think cod mobile is uh pretty optimized on this device but pubg mobile being the nature of the game i think pubg mobile is quite taxing on the processor and if you're using pubg mobile light the light version i think that would help i guess i'm not very sure in terms of the graphics on the light version because I've never played the light version before but maybe one day I should try the light version of PUBG Mobile but it's kind of funny because the light version doesn't have all the features of the full version of PUBG so I think you're missing out a lot of things just to sacrifice for better graphics even if that is true so honestly gaming wise Poco X3 NFC is uh, I can't recommend it at all 
but hopefully down the line if they do improve it i'll definitely do another video to revisit the gaming performance but overall i think i can recommend this phone to people who are just using for a daily phone this is a very good device definitely the battery lasts i i mean i can charge the phone one day and it can last probably up to three days on light usage that is extremely impressive i mean even my iphone maximum it lasts like what like slightly over a day but this phone with its uh, gigantic battery i think it's a great value for money overall so that concludes my video i hope you guys like this video if you do have any questions or comments do leave it down below and if you do want me to do more tests on the poco x3 nfc do let me know in the comments as well so do give this video a like if you did like it and i'll see you guys in the next one